Number eight is Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar peculiar. <laughs> What up, book nerds? Margo from Team Epic Reads here. Happy end of 2016. Despite the fact that this year was like the worst year in history, there were actually a lot of really amazing books that went on sale and published this year, and I got to read so many of them. So this list video, I'm counting down the top 10 books that I read this year, or my top 10 ultimate favorites. And it could be some books I read this year didn't necessarily publish in 2016, they published in other years, but I just finally got around to them. And a few, well, one in particular, uh, doesn't publish until 2017, but it did make the list. It was funny when last night I was trying to come up with all of the books that I wanted to include in this list, and I was just like freaking out because I like went through and I looked at all of the books that I read, and I was just like, how can I possibly decide? It's like much easier, it was a lot easier to figure out what books were my least favorites. That was very easy to figure out. It's more so the ones of like narrowing it down from all the books that I read into just these like 10. It's too hard, it's too hard. But I challenge you guys to do it, so jump down in the comments below and tell me what your top 10 favorite books are from this year that you read and we'll get in there and we'll, we'll, we'll hash it out. And I'm just gonna use some of my clips from my previous book hauls you know, to sort of recap the year and recap my TBR pile and all that stuff. So let's get into it. The top 10 books that I read this year. Number 10 is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. Okay, it's set in this like dark, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is like, this is like not at all like what I think of when I think of this book. Dark, it's very dark. And it's set in this world where there are, in this city where there's like two sides to the city. It's, the city is called Verity. They each controlled by two different families. And then there's monsters, but there's three different types of monsters. And it's told in two different points of view. There are paths cross. Oh. <laughs> It's really, really good, and I'm just gonna like let you read all about it. Number nine is Salt to the Sea by Rudis Apetis. So this is the third book that she's ever written, and the third book of hers that I've read, and she's quickly becoming one of my favorite authors of all time. Ruta only writes historical fiction novels. Two of them, this one and Between Shades of Grey, are set in World War II, and then her second book, Out of the Easy, is set in the 50s, in New Orleans. Five different characters as they sort of um, come together on this ship and I'm not gonna say what happens but you can kind of guess what happens based on this cover and like all of her novels it will probably shock you some of the parts that she talks about she does not shy away from the atrocities of World War II and what happened. Um, there was this one moment where she talks about the ship pulling out of the harbor and all of the mothers were frantically trying to get onto the ship and get their babies up onto the ship but they couldn't because the ship is leaving and so they just threw their babies up at the boats and it was just awful but in the kind of way that you want to read about it because she's writing about things that aren't as well known and but they're so important and she just she is such a beautiful way of writing in a way it, ah I'm like I'm, tr I'm struggling to find the words to describe her writing style, but she's absolutely a very important write, um, writer that you guys should definitely read. If you are into World War II, if you're into historical fiction, definitely check her out. If you like to codename Verity or anything like that, if you like Band of Brothers, any of the World War II stuff, check out her novels. They are absolutely amazing and will bring these fictional characters to life in a way that make, like, are they, they almost read like they were real people and that these are memoirs, but they're actually fictional, but so well researched and based on actual things that happen, so definitely check this one out. Number eight is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar sh Peculiar <laughs> Why is that word so hard to say? Number eight is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. That book also gets a special shout out on this list because my new dog, Olive, is named after the girl on the cover. <laughs> So she's a YA dog. It's one of those books that 100% lives up to the hype, at least for me. I loved this book. At the first 100 pages, I was just sort of like, okay, I don't really know where this is going, but the pictures are really cool, and I'm into Ransom's writing style, and I like World War II stuff, and I, I, I'm into it, but I don't really know where this is going. And then when Jacob gets to the island, the story really starts taking off, and it re you really sort of see like where Ransom's going with it, and then he just continues to take you on a path that's just like, whoa! I thought you were going that way and he's like no I'm taking you this way this is one of the most original stories I've ever 
like read ever. It's like magical realism and it's so good and it made me like have feelings and like oh it was so good and I can't wait to see the movie and see how Tim Burton ruins the book. Just kidding, he's probably gonna do a good job. Number seven on this list, which also is the funniest book I read all year, My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. And it is hilarious! This book is so funny and I don't know anything about Tudor history because I did not pay attention in high school classes, uh, so this was like a really fun way for me to learn about the Tudor history, you know, except with like shape-shifting and stuff, so, you know, it, it's like history, but like not history. <sighs> I don't really know how to, I'm really bad at explaining books. If you haven't noticed, if you haven't watched any of these, I am terrible at explaining the plot of things, because I'm just like, I, it's, it was animals fun. Good, I read, book. And there's some deckled edges, very swanky. Now the best part about this book, besides the book itself, is the dedication, which I'm going to read to you. <clears throat> there we go, that way you can see the cover. <laughs> Marketing. For everyone who knows, there was enough room for Leonardo DiCaprio on that door. That's the first dedication. Second dedication, and for England. We're really sorry for what we're about to do to your history. I love that. Anyway, book's really funny. You guys should definitely check it out. Number six is a book that didn't publish in 2016, but I finally got around to reading it this year. And that is To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. I read uh, To All the Boys I Loved Before when it first came out. And then I bought this one and it's just been sort of sitting on my shelf for a while. And I finally decided to pick it up because it won one of the Book Shimmy Awards. And so I finally read it and I'm obsessed. Seriously, um, Teen John Ambrose McLaren. Anybody else? Anyone? I know everybody likes Kavinsky, but I'm a John Ambrose girl. So that's just my prerogative. So if you aren't John Ambrose girl, let's fight about it in the comments. Number five is actually a book that doesn't publish until 2017 and it was featured in my last book haul video and that is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I feel very lucky to have read an early copy of this book because it doesn't go on sale until February 28th so I will talk about this book again when it goes on sale but I just want to talk a little bit about this book now because hands down this is one of the most remarkable YA books I have ever read from plot to voice to characters to pace i the setting just everything about this book works everything about this book is so perfect and on point and just very real and honest and i cannot like stress enough how important this book is it was inspired by black lives matter and the book is about this girl star who witnesses the death the shooting death of her friend by a white cop and star lives in one neighborhood where she grew up and where her family is and then but she goes to school in a completely different neighborhood predominantly an all-white neighborhood where she's got her friends and her boyfriend are in that neighborhood and really the story is about um, when the death of her friend Khalil becomes national attention and brings all these people in and writing these two communities that she's a part of sort of are at odds and they collide and she has to figure out who she is among these communities honestly the thing that I love most about this story is the way that Angie Thomas writes Star. Her voice is so true and unfiltered and raw and Angie was not censored or forced to write in a different way because it's a YA audience or anything. She just wrote the character how the character needed to be written and she pulled it off perfectly. This book is absolutely perfect and I cannot wait for you guys to read it. Number four on this list is Ruined, Ruined by Amy Tintera. This one will get you out of any reading slump, any book hangover, hangover that you have or if you're just like, I don't have anything to read, everything sucks, Meh. Well, you should read Ruined by Amy Tintera because this book starts out with a bang or more like, a savage murder and then like literally does not stop with the action it's insane it's so intense it's one of the most intense books like i've read in a long time my number three favorite book of the year is crooked kingdom by lee bardugo no foreigner no foreigners no murals <laughs> no mourners no funerals oh <sighs> Okay, Lee Bardugo is probably my favorite fan YA fantasy writer, 
and I was obsessed with Shadow and Bone. I even made my husband dress up like the Darkling once so I could take a picture of him. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but I didn't think I could love Six of Crows more than Shadow and Bone. But surprise, I did love Six of Crows more than Shadow and Bone. And I didn't think I could love Crooked Kingdom more than Six of Crows, but <laughs> I did. I do. I really, really did. First of all, let's talk about this gorgeous package design. The cover is black and gold, and the last month I have only allowed myself to buy black and gold books because, I don't know, I'm just trying a thing. And so, luckily, this is black and gold, so I could buy it, totally get away with that. But look at the paper. What are those, papers? <laughs> just look at the pages, you guys. Oh, let's make sure it focuses. Oh my god, they are blood red. It's like I pricked my finger and then just went psh and painted the pages with my blood. <laughs> um, it's absolutely beautiful. The first time I opened it, the pages were kind of stuck together and I made that like, that like creak, that creakily, I think I just invented word, that creakily sound that pages make when you, when you crack open a fresh book that like, I can't even, oh, anyway, it made that wonderful creakily sound. They don't smell like blood, but they smell better than that. Oh, and then everything, it's got this like little, I take my paint, I take the, the covers off when I read them on the subway because obviously I don't want to damage the covers, but it's just, then I have this like little red magical piece of wonderfulness, just, oh, oh, it's so good. I like am obsessed with it. The number two book that I read this year and the only graphic novel to appear on this and not technically YA but I'm still including it because I'm obsessed with this series so much is Saga by Brian K. Vaughn and illustrated by Fiona Staples. <laughs> Saga is about, it's really just a love story about a boy and a girl named Milana and Marco and they're from rival planets. Well, technically he's from a moon. Anyway, I won't get into the details. They're from, it's like a little bit of a Romeo Juliet situation going on here where He's horns and she's from the, uh, what are those called? Wings! There you go. They meet on the battlefield and they kind of fall in love and then they kind of have a baby and then both of their planets are after them because neither one of the planets wants them to have procreated, but they did. And so now they're on the run with this baby. Anyway, it's an amazing saga <laughs> set in space and it's just full of like romance and hearts and feelings and emotions and it's just and the art is so amazing fiona staples did the art and she's so badass and brian k vaughn who also wrote why the last man standing and paper girls which i've also talked about on this video he also used to write for that show lost so if you happen to like that show you might like any of his writing he's a really great writer and if you have read it who's your favorite character my favorite character besides alana obviously is goose because he's so cute so how do you decide out of all of the books that you've read this year, which one is the number one? Which one is the absolute best book you've read of 2016? It's kind of like, it's kind of hard to figure that out, right? So for me, I decided whatever book stuck with me the longest, whatever book when I finished it and I put it down and I just could not get the characters, the story, everything out of my head. I just couldn't get it out of my head for days. That's how I chose my number one book this year. And the number one book that I read in 2016, uh, deserves a little twirl, is The Female of the Species by Minnie McGinnis. Ta-da! I am obsessed with this book. I read it in one sitting. Everybody in my office was like raving about it and they were like, oh, you have to read it. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I sat down, I read it and I was just like, holy shit, this book is so good. It like deserves just, it's good, so good that I just wanna like, spew a stream of bad words because it's that good. It's everybody and their grandmother needs to read this book because it's 2016, because we're all nasty women, because of just everything that's going on in the world. You want a book that just is powerful and is like a punch in the face when you read it and the writing is so, so unbelievably good and the story is just, oh, I just, oh. I have such a hard time just not shoving this book down everyone's throats because I love it so much. Like seriously, I like will like be on the subway and I see strangers just not reading. I'm like, oh, you look like you could use a book. Here you go, read this one. That's how I am with this book. And I, if you're gonna read any of my books that I recommend this year, please read this one. It is my absolute favorite. It's a standalone, so if you're a commitophobe, don't worry about it. 
you got one book and then you're done. If you like to read words, you should read this book. There you go. That's that's why I recommend this book. I seriously cannot, I'm like having a hard time even describing why you should read this book because it's just that important and it's just that powerful. And I have yet to meet a single person who's read this book and did not just go like, holy shit, this is so good because it's so good. It's so freaking good. And I really hope you guys all read it. So that's it. That is my number one book of the year. It deserves another twirl. <laughs> so that's it for 2016. What was your number one book that you read this whole year? How many books did you read in total? I think I read around 50 books, probably more because there was a lot of manuscripts thrown around in there. So I don't even know how many books I've read. I should probably like check my Goodreads reading goal or something. I probably haven't updated that in so long. Anyway, how many books did you guys read? What was your number one book of the year? Oh, all of the things. It's our last list video of the year. Get head down to the comments below. Let's chat it out. And I wish you guys all the very best of your 20 last few, I don't know what I'm saying. Head down to the comments below and let's just chat it out. So before you go, head up into the corner, one of these YouTube corners where there's a little vote and tell me what should our list video be to kick off 2017. Go up there and click and vote. Don't forget to subscribe. Whenever I do this, that just means click the buttons, even though I know that they're down there. <laughs> and I wish you all a very happy, wonderful new year. 2016 is over. Finally. Thank God. <gasps> this year is the worst. <laughs> and there's just going to be so many new books to read. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's just the end of the year. I'm so happy this year is over and I'm ready for a whole new year and a whole new year of reading and books and book shimmies and all that wonderfulness. So, all right. I'll see you guys in 2017. Bye.